Hi everyone, in this video I will talk about long-term potentiation. Long-term potentiation, exact, what does exactly long-term potentiation means? Long-term means long-lasting, potentiation means boosted response. Here is our brain which is formed of billions of neurons connected to each other by synapses. And people have found out that underlying learning and memory related tasks the strength between the synapses, the conduction efficiency in this synapses could change. And the change of synaptic strength or synaptic efficacy could be long lasting as long as hours to days. And this kind of change in synaptic strength which lasts long is known as long term potentiation. And let's just look at the timeline. Long term potentiation, the phenomena was first discovered at 1965 by Bliss and Lomo and what they have done is they have taken take, uh, they, have, they have used a slice brain slice based in artificial cere cerebrospinal fluid and they are able to record they can stimulate the presynaptic terminals and they are able to record from the post synapse using recording electrode now when they give a presynaptic current pulse from the post synapse they are able to record a voltage change which is known as excitatory postsynaptic potentials or EPSP. Now they used a pro protocol which is known as high frequency stimulation protocol which is basically stimulating the neuron with high frequency for quite a lot of time. After high frequency protocol they give the same amount of current injection that they have given earlier but the same amount of current injection has given rise to boosted response means increase in postsynaptic potential amplitude and this is the measure of potentiated response other way of understanding this kind of readout is calculating the slope of postsynaptic potential now if you plot the slope over time after high frequency stimulation they have found that the slope is always increased that means synaptic strength has altered synaptic strength is increased because same amount of current injection could now give rise to boosted response uh, more voltage deflections that means something is there in the high frequency stimulus which can cause this change and this is the experiment that they have done they have taken rabbit brain and the rabbit brain they, they, they did a coronal section they bathed the section in artificial cerebrospinal fluid such the section can stay alive the neurons can stay alive and it's a physio they ensure that this is a physiological situation and they have stimulated the perforant path and they have recorded from dented gyrus granule cells and the perforant path comes from entorenal cortex to the hippocampus and they are recording from the uh, granule cells when they are stimulating the perforant path each time they give a high frequency stimulus they have seen there is an increase in postsynaptic potential amplitude, postsynaptic potential uh, slope, the EPSP slope. And, and they can see that boosted response lasts for several hours. And thereby, they termed this kind of protocol as long term potentiation. Now, long term potentiation created a massive impact on neuroscience community, a huge excitement, because long term potentiation has very good properties like input specificity and cooperativity. Let me explain what is input specificity. Long-term potentiation only happens in synapse-specific manner. Only the synapse which is stimulated gets potentiated and that synapse has alteration in synaptic strength or efficacy. Let's say here this synapse is stimulated and the alteration in the synaptic strength is specific to this yellow neuron and the blue neuron synapse. And cooperativity means that potentiation of one synapse could lead to, could influence the potentiation of another synapse. There is a certain degree of crosstalk. That means the potentiation of yellow synapse would increase the likelihood that this green neuron and its synapse would get potentiated. So this kind of good computational properties led to the understanding that this kind of mechanism could be used by the brain to encode memories. And there is a huge excitement at that time. Later people found out that not only by artificial stimulation, people also can do 
conditioning experiments, learning tasks, and that can give rise to similar kind of changes like, like the LTP protocol, suggesting the mechanisms which is underlying which is underlying the LTP protocol could be used by the brain to encode memories. So what is so special about that high frequency stimulation? What does it do? So let's say here is a model neuron where you can stimulate the presynapse and thereby presynaptic termin in the presynaptic terminal the action poten potential flows down and that would that would cause presynaptic neurotransmitter release assuming this is a glutamatergic synapse the neurotransmitter would be glutamate and the postsynaptic neuron there are there are glutamate receptors like amper receptors and nmd receptors people found out that nmd receptor has profound role on this long term potentiation now, NMD receptor can understand the activity status of presynapse and the postsynapse, and it can understand the coincidence between the activity of the two neurons. Let's see how it happens. Now, NMD receptor doesn't open when glu uh, glutamate bind, but AMPA receptor can open when glutamate bind and thereby allowing sodium to get in. Because NMD receptor has a magnesium block in the uh, in the in, in the in intermembrane side, inner membrane side, once sodium getting in inside the postsynaptic membrane, it would depolarize the postsynaptic membrane, make it more positive, and allow the magnesium to repel out. Now the NMD receptor can allow calcium influx, and thereby you are able to record a postsynaptic potential. So what exactly happens at NMD le receptor level? So NMD receptor can understand the presynaptic activity status and that is conveyed by the glutamate because the, in response when the presynapse is active it would release neurotransmitter so the presynaptic activity status is conveyed by the glutamate secondly the postsynaptic activity status is conveyed by removal of the magnesium block magnesium block would be only revealed when the postsynapse is sufficiently depolarized thereby at a molecular level presynaptic activity status and the postsynaptic activity status could be coupled and thereby huge calcium influx could happen. People have found that if you remove NMD receptor long-term potentiation doesn't happen. So what is exactly happening downstream to NMD receptor? In brief NMD receptor allow calcium to get in and calcium level rises from few hundred nanomolars to micromolars, a tenfold increase in calcium level. And the in brief increase in calcium level has profound meaning. The spatiotemporal dynamics of calcium has hidden messages inside it, which could be decoded by specific molecules like CAMK2, which is a calcium and calmodulin based protein kinase. Now, one of the one of many things that calcium dependent protein kinase CAMK2 can do is phosphorylating AMPOC mediated vesicles. The, AM, the AMPO receptors are always ready to be delivered to the surface, but they are held by some inhibitory molecules which don't allow them to display it in a normal case. But after calcium increase by long term potentiation, CAMK2 can phosphorylate those vesicles and can, can allow their delivery to the postsynaptic membrane. Now you can understand that AMPA mediated current could increase and which would in turn increase the probability that NMD receptor could open. Now NMD receptor could be easily open once there are way more AMPA receptor displayed on the membrane surface. So at a functional level, at a functional level, the strength of the synapses has changed. People also found not only in functional level, also there are structural changes in the postsynapse. People found that postsynaptic size, the size of the synapses also grow, suggesting functional and structural changes are associated with long-term potentiation. So if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share my video and please subscribe. Thank you.